In his latest social media rant, former President Donald Trump is accusing Vice President Kamala Harris of using AI to create images of fake crowds at her events. On Truth Social, Trump said in part, quote, has anyone noticed that Kamala cheated at the airport? There was nobody at the plane and she AI'd it and showed a massive crowd of so-called followers, but they didn't exist. Same thing is happening with her fake crowds at her speeches. This is the way the Democrats win elections by cheating. And they're even worse at the ballot box. She should be disqualified because the creation of a fake image is election interference. Harris's campaign fired back on X, writing, quote, one, this is an actual photo of a 15,000 person crowd for Harris Waltz in Michigan. Two, Trump has still not campaigned in a swing state in over a week. Low energy? The New York Times, meanwhile, also disrupted or disputed Trump's claim, saying Harris is correct about the number of attendees at her events, but Trump's fixation with the crowd sizes is nothing new. You might remember nearly eight years ago, Trump was fuming over media reports that he had a relatively small inauguration turnout. He also said this at his latest press conference. Let's watch. I've spoken to the biggest crowds. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, same number of people. If not, we had more. And they said he had a million people, but I had 25,000 people. But when you look at the exact same picture, and everything's the same because it was the fountains, the whole thing, all the way back to uh, from Lincoln to Washington, and you look at it, and you look at the picture of his crowd, my crowd, uh, we actually had more people. They said I had 25,000, and he had a million people. And I'm okay with it because I liked Dr. Martin Luther King. Trump's not the only one fixated on crowd sizes, however. Over on Morning Joe, the hosts are comparing Kamala Harris's, quote, mammoth crowds to a Taylor Swift concert. Let's watch. Mika, I, I mean, can't. look at the numbers. I mean, the Philadelphia event, I remember when we first, I mean, that first came out, it seems like two weeks ago, doesn't it? And you, yeah. you saw it was so huge. And then the Wisconsin seemed to be even bigger. Detroit was uh, mammoth. Then Glendale uh, reports of 15,000 people there, more than Barack Obama had uh, in his 2008 campaign. And then the, the, the Vegas show last night. And let's, let's just say what it is. These are like, these have transcended politics and gotten into popular culture. They just have. It's something that we've talked about before. We talked about with Barack Obama. We talked about how it happened in 1980 with Ronald Reagan. But you have people talking yeah. about these things um, like their rock shows, like their Taylor Swift events. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I mean, come on. Martin Luther King Jr. Breathless kind of. Oh, go ahead. Had 250,000 people. Trump's on, on January 6th, there was estimated 53,000 people. Okay. I think no it, it's really a bad look for the Trump campaign to be obsessing over this, saying it's fake when it's not AI and it's not fake. There have always been political rallies that are fun for people. There are musical guests, there are speeches that are very exciting. You get to be in a room of people who you're like on the same team on in some vague way. It's like sports and uh, Americans love sports. Yeah. Um so to be clear, the, the assertion that the crowd in front of the plane is AI generated or in fake is not true. Right. There are, is independent verification that the crowds are real. Conservatives have recognized that they are real non-Trump conservatives. Um, Matt Walsh of The Daily Wire points out that the crowds are real. I'm reading from him on Twitter now. They're there because Kamala has the entire media and Hollywood machine built up, building up hype for her. Trump does it in spite of that machine. Point that out. Make that the response. The AI stuff makes us look desperate and terrified. Very dumb strategy. Very, very dumb. Ian Miles Chong um, says the same thing. Um, other you know, conservatives pointing this out <clears throat> on social media that the crowds are real. Um, I think Morning Joe, you know, have that breathless from Mika, oh my God, wow, it's so amazing. Uh, okay, yes, those are supporters of 
Kamala Harris, there are millions of them. There are millions of supporters of Donald Trump. Um, he has drawn massive crowds in the past as well, and shall again, and so will she. They both have a lot of supporters who are excited to vote for them, and it's going to be a very close election with a small slice of the electorate undecided in key swing states, and we don't really know who's going to come out on top yet. There's plenty of enthusiasm for both candidates. Some of it is fake and generated by, uh, I would argue, media that is in the tank for one or the other, but they're, no, they're, they're, have, Tons of people are going to show up for rallies for either of them. Right. Well, we did see J.D. Vance's events have rather low turnout comparatively. I don't know why Trump held a rally in Montana. He's having J.D. Vance campaign separately. There's also reports of people who had asked Trump about the weird allegations, and Trump responded, according to people who have not gone on the record with their name but are familiar with the conversation, have said that people are talking about J.D. Vance when they say that. So I think he's looking at J.D. Vance crowd sizes. He has a particular feeling about J.D. Vance right now, seemingly, and he's comparing them to Kamala Harris, really missing the forest for the trees. Because like you said, this is a guy with tons of supporters, but he's a TV guy. He cares about how many people show up, and the fact that he's letting it get to him is really telling. But I want to talk about Bacon again, Robbie, because okay. he said that MLK's speech, with the March for Jobs and Freedom, that there were a million people there. There were 250,000. Similarly, he says the price of bacon is four times higher than it is. He just believes everything is four times bigger than it is. He does not understand that he's making a size comparison. I'm talking only about bacon and crowd sizes. This is a guy who is not doing math right and is terribly hurt by Kamala Harris's and Waltz's big crowd sizes. I, yeah, he. <clears throat> Why is he so obsessed with it? I, I don't know, he has people. because he's a TV guy. Yeah, he's a TV guy. I mean, Kamala Harris could benefit from doing a TV appearance sometime in the next century. I would love to see her do that. Um, her rallies are televised. She's not, uh, she's not uh, sitting down for any interviews with uh, reporters. Um, that would be nice if she did. You should invite her, Robbie, if you want her to sit down. With she can come. Back. She's not going to come here. She can, <laughs> she'd be welcome to come here. She has here. to sit over there. <laughs> That's nice, Robbie. You're not going to give her my seat? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to host the show with her. Well, if she wants to do that, that would be a fun day. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, well, she's she's not even willing to subject herself to a a, a positive, a, a reporter who will just ask her sycophantic questions about how she's bratted herself into young people popularity. Um, and Elon's going to be asking the hard ones with Trump tonight, right? Um, we'll see. Well, at least uh, they're doing an interview. Yes. Yeah. But she's doing rallies. She's talking to the people. Yeah, I think a sit-down interview would be good. I think the problem is the campaign has not sat down and said, this is the policy platform we're running on. We're all on the same page. A lot of their speeches lately have been a little bit vibes-based. They're making some, some loose promises. But like any campaign, they're going to need to say, how are we going to actually protect abortion? Are we going to leverage the DOJ in the way that Biden promised to but then didn't? to address some of this prosecution of people crossing state lines to get abortions and people trying to get access to health care that's being restricted from the states in a way that, that people feel they're not considering when their life actually is at risk and they need the abortion as the law says is still legal in some of these states like Texas. So we need clear policy, policies from them, and I think what's holding it up is now her and Waltz have to combine their agenda with each other. But there's going to be so many consultants that are really fine-tooth combing the exact wording of what they say so that it's the most receivable and that takes time. And I think they're probably waiting till they do that, which is annoying. Just be real. Just say what you believe. But we know politicians don't do that. So I think that's what, what the holdup is. More rising right after this.